So Shauna is a community-based longitudinal study that includes cisgender and transgender women and two-spirit people living with HIV. The overarching objective of Shauna over the years has been to understand the impact of broad social and structural factors associated with HIV care continuum outcomes, as well as with sexual and reproductive health services. So we have an awe-inspiring community research team of quantitative and qualitative peers, all with deep roots in the community, including peers with lived experience living with HIV. The Shauna Community Engagement Associates, positive advisory working groups, their research teams, and positive women's advisory boards have all played a critical role in supporting recruitment, reaching out to community collaborators, and actively participating in research studies, including co-authoring and co-presenting research over the years, as well as many other roles in knowledge translation and exchange. These groups all purposely reflect the demographics of Shauna participants, with more than half of members being Indigenous and at least 5 to 10 percent coming from Black and African Canadian communities. We seek to find a sense of belonging. We come to a place where everybody has a common interest, this disease. PeerWeb has been such a platform for people who I think wouldn't have a voice in that space where they feel they are safe. I find getting together with the women very uplifting and empowering because you know you see all the women. We looked at four kinds of HIV stigma, including anticipated stigma related to concerns about reactions following disclosure of HIV status, as well as internalized stigma. So almost all of Shana participants had experienced some kind of HIV stigma in their lifetimes, and 90% reported experiencing HIV stigma in the last six months. Over half of Shana participants have had their HIV status disclosed without consent in their life. Shana participants use HIV status was disclosed without their consent were five times as likely to experience verbal or physical violence due to HIV status. These studies highlight the critical importance of supporting safe disclosure practices with cis and trans women and two-spirit people living with HIV but also increase education in health centers, housing spaces, incarceration spaces, and anywhere that people might have had their HIV status disclosed involuntarily. We found that incarceration was a primary factor in shaping viral suppression. Women living with HIV who had been incarcerated were three times more likely to have an unsuppressed viral load. 95% of Shana participants have experienced physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. Obviously, trauma negatively affects the person's mental, physical, social, emotional, and spiritual health. So trauma-informed care is so needed to support adherence to our ARVs. Many participants identified culture as part of treatment, but stated obstacle to cultural revitalization, including limited access to cis and trans women specific circles, and urban healing ceremonies, as well as economic barriers to visiting home communities. Participants wanted greater access to HIV services delivered by Indigenous peers, elders, and in groups. Participants also highlighted intense power dynamics that shaped their care encounters. Many Indigenous women shared stories of racism and paternalism from practitioners that interfered with the care that they requested and needed. The criminalization of HIV non-disclosure is often positioned as a way of protecting women, yet very little empirical data documents the actual impacts of these laws and how they shape HIV care trajectories, sexual health, and social inequities among women living with HIV. We conducted a qualitative study that highlighted that the criminalization of HIV non-disclosure renders women living with HIV who are already disproportionately affected by gender-based violence at additional risk of violence from intimate partners. Those at highest risk of prosecution are the most marginalized women living with HIV, including women who are unstably housed, sex workers, and women who've been recently incarcerated. The community asked for the use of arts-based participatory methods to further explore how stigma and criminalization shapes the lives of cis and trans women living with HIV. Several participants photographed condoms and pills and described the weight of the responsibilities that come with living with HIV. 
many participants had complex relationships with HIV treatment due to traumatic experiences with Western medicine and the dismissal of traditional approaches to healing. CC and Jay speak to this. This is a picture of me holding my pills. They're little, but they have such a big control over my life. I wish I had more time to learn the teachings, the proper teachings. That's the thing I miss the most, is losing my culture. And then having this HIV, you have to learn the white ways and do all the things they ask you to do.